We've all been there. You're snuggled up, watching a nice, spooky, scary movie, and then all of a sudden, one of the characters does something so stupid. You're like, why would you go into the basement alone? Do not go in the house. Just wait outside and literally just call the police. But what you might not realize is that by creating such a visceral reaction, horror movies are actually training our brains to deal with a crisis situation. And this isn't the only benefit either. I was surprised when I started digging in just how well researched and studied the effects of horror fiction is on our brains. And just how many potential benefits you could receive just by consuming scary media. So in this video, we're going to be going over some of the most interesting scientific discoveries related to horror and how it impacts your brain. As many fans of the genre will tell you, describing your favorite movie or whatever will get you some pretty odd looks at times. So this guy has like an opening in his stomach and he Ooh. like normally puts like VHS tapes in it, but then this oh. time he takes out okay. a gun, but it's like fused to his hand mm -hmm. and it's like, long oh. live the new flesh. That's great. I'm happy for you. But now, with the information from this video, you can finally tell your friends, I'm not weird-brained, I'm actually big-brained because I exercise my brain because horror movies are kinda like working out, but for your brain. In his article, Monsters Evolve, Danish scholar Matthias Klassen suggests that horror fiction, by activating our innate fear responses, may actually enhance our understanding and management of fear in a controlled setting. So by engaging with horror narratives, individuals might actually refine their psychological and emotional strategies for coping with fear, and then applying those lessons into real world scenarios. So basically, by being aware that you're consuming horror media and not actually experiencing it yourself, it can lead to improved cognitive strategies for dealing with fear and anxiety in real life. This is because as Matea says, the movie or horror fiction you're consuming is offering a form of like play with fear that is both educational and emotionally engaging. But by knowing it's fake and yet still triggering those fear responses in our brains, it invites us into like a safe space for us to explore and understand fear, possibly enhancing resilience and adaptive behaviors in the face of actual threats. So much like shadow boxing can help you prepare for a match by like training your muscles for what to do when the time comes, having experiences with a book or a movie about horrific situations can actually help your brain prepare for one if God forbid you ever find yourself in one. To just put a fine point on it, let's say you're watching a movie and someone is being followed by a mysterious stranger. This then engages your brain, sometimes subconsciously, to put you in their shoes and discern how you would figure out what to do in this situation, potentially making you more likely to react quicker and with less panic. You know, should you find yourself fighting off some demon stalker. If you can believe it, there's actually a ton of science backing this up. So much so that horror movie scenes have actually helped scientists identify key brain circuits for fear processing. Researchers at University of California, Irvine actually used horror movies to help identify a key neural pathway in humans that explains how the brain processes fear and feelings of anxiety, which was a monumental finding that could help scientists unlock new ways to treat mental health disorders. Under brain scans, we've seen that horror movies actually stimulate multiple areas of the brain, including the amygdala, which is responsible for fear processing, and the frontal lobes, which are crucial for reasoning and planning. This continuous engagement of the brain actually enhances excitement and hones our problem-solving skills, particularly under stress. Not to mention that the dopamine release triggered by the adrenaline rush can also increase alertness, potentially aiding in mood improvement and more obviously, overall cognitive function. In her article, The Science Behind the Scare, Author Danielle Andrea Santos references the sociologist Margie Kerr, saying, quote, 
Horror movies stimulate the body's fight or flight response, triggered when the body perceives a threat. This involuntary response causes the body to release adrenaline, which causes psychological effects such as an increased heart rate, respiration, and sweating. Other chemicals such as endorphins are also released, which are the body's natural painkillers and are known to increase feelings of pleasure. In the event of a real threat, the effects of these chemicals are helpful for survival. The increased heart rate brought by a rush of adrenaline causes more blood to be pumped into the muscles. Meanwhile, increased breathing allows more oxygen to be let into the bloodstream. This then allows more oxygen to reach the brain, improving one's cognitive performance and sharpening one's senses to aid in their survival. Like mentioned earlier, the fear and hormones that are actually released are real and can essentially cause horror movies to play a role in anxiety management by providing a sense of control. They offer an outlet for the expression of emotions, acting as a potential coping tool. This exposure to controlled fear experiences is extremely similar to the concept of exposure therapy, which allows viewers to practice and learn emotional and behavioral strategies to cope with real life anxieties. This goes hand in hand with excitation theory, in which psychologist Dolph Zillman states that, quote, arousal provoked by a previous stimulus can intensify emotional responses triggered by an entirely different stimuli. Residual arousal from an initial stimulus can transfer to a successive stimuli amplifying the emotional response from these subsequent stimuli. This means that not only do these pieces of media provide a genuine emotional response, they also basically piggyback one emotion into another. So in this example, a movie hitting you with a really big scare or ratcheting up the sense of tension will build up a ton of, for lack of a better word, emotional energy. Then after the scare or tension, when there's a sense of relief or, or maybe even a victory arises, that extremely strong emotional energy you've been building will transfer from that tension and snowball it into a giant feeling of relief, leading to a massively more powerful feeling of relief or accomplishment than it would have otherwise. As they say, bigger stakes, bigger payoffs. And the most important and probably the most overlooked aspect of horror is that the genre offers a platform for introspection and for philosophical exploration, presenting existential situations that prompt viewers to reflect on their own values, beliefs, and even mortality. Engaging with themes such as humanity, society, life or death choices allows viewers to undergo a process of self-discovery and fosters a deeper understanding of themselves and it even promotes personal growth. This reflective engagement with horror content can lead to in-depth discussions and further exploration of the philosophical and moral issues presented, adding just another layer of personal development on top of everything. I mean, this one makes a lot of sense, right? In a lot of horror content, you're presented with a situation that you would presumably never be put in, right? Oh my God, uh, the woman in this Saw movie had to cut off her leg to save her baby. Oh, would you be able to cut off your leg to save your baby? Oh man, I can't even think about that. In a weird roundabout way, you're able to find out more about yourself by being presented with these situations that you would have never been presented with otherwise. To take it one step further, incorporating horror into therapeutic approaches, such as exposure therapy, like we mentioned earlier, and narrative therapy, it has actually shown promise in helping individuals process trauma and anxiety disorders. Controlled exposure to horror content can actually serve as a tool for emotional release and desensitization, aiding in the processing of grief and trauma. The act of engaging with horror narratives can serve as a catalyst for individuals to explore their anxieties, their phobias, and their insecurities, empowering them to confront their fears. However, it is important to approach traumatic horror content with mindfulness. Due to the 
potential risks and triggers associated with engaging in such narratives. While horror can offer a unique form of escapism and relief from grief and trauma, it's crucial to maintain a balance between engaging your brain and emotional processing. And that we should always try to be mindful of personal emotional triggers to avoid exacerbating distress. For example, if you've had a particularly traumatic event happen to you, you might not want to sit there and watch two hours of a fictionalized version of your exact trauma. While some people may be able to enjoy or benefit from being able to step outside of their own bodies and take a look at that situation, it can just as easily turn into re-experiencing your own traumas. And with those empathetic hormones rushing through your body, that fictionalized version could become all too real. So just, you know, be careful. Don't just throw your friends into a traumatic horror movie because you think it'll help them. Like, that's not what anyone's recommending to do here. So is horror going to magically fix your brain and all your traumas? No. But is it good for your brain? Yeah, kinda. Who knew? Well, these guys knew. And that's it. So go forth tonight. Be free. Get scared. Give your brain some nice juicy little hormones to snack on. And if you like this and want more or have another deep dive for us to dive into, let us know. Leave us a comment, subscribe. You know, you're on YouTube. Have a good one.